Hey, it's Pastor Tim, the online campus pastor here at Northwest Church, and I am so glad you decided to join us on YouTube today. We have an exciting message for you today, so make sure you are engaged, leaned in, and taking notes. And if you haven't yet, make sure to like and share the video. Also remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you can stay up to date with all things happening here on the YouTube channel. Now let's jump into the sermon. As we start this new series called Gratitude, and we're going to be talking about gratitude. You know, it's Thanksgiving season. How many are excited about Thanksgiving? Oh, man, I'm telling you, it's when it's okay. It's not a sin to eat an entire pie at one setting. That's okay. Go and be blessed as you eat this, this fall. You can have all the dressing that you want and the dumplings and all the stuff that comes with Thanksgiving. So I just want you to have a blessed season, okay? How about that? So go and eat and eat well. <laughs> and so... But, you know, thinking about eating and talking about eating, have you ever been eating dinner with someone? Maybe it's a family or family member or friend, and someone said, hey, let's give thanks. How many of you do that? How many of you do that? I think that's important that our children hear us say, thank you, Lord, for blessing us with food to eat, knowing there are so many people who do not have the luxury of sitting down and having a meal having a good meal and having one together. But have you ever wondered, you know, we sit down and we say, Lord, we give thanks today. Have you ever wondered where that come from? Have you ever just where that started? You know, some people would argue, some people would say it started with the pilgrims who journeyed to America many years ago. But I want you to know that it actually started with Jesus in the New Testament. All four Gospels record Jesus breaking bread with his disciples, and you'll hear the phrase, and gave thanks. So it was often throughout the Gospels that Jesus would break bread, have a meal with his disciples, and he would give thanks. One example would be the miracle of the feeding 5,000 found in John chapter 6, verse 11. It says that Jesus took the bread, he gave thanks to God, and distributed them to the people. When it was over, he did the same with the fish, and they all ate as much as they Wanted. Isn't that incredible that even Jesus, the Son of God, took time out of his schedule to say thanks to the Father? What was he doing? He was, he was recognizing that all of his blessing, even his daily provision, came from God the Father. And that's what it is. When we give thanks, whether it's a meal or just giving thanks for waking us up in the morning, we're simply giving thanks to God the Father for being our protector and being our provider on a daily basis. So as we look at this phrase, give thanks, at a little closer look, in the original language, here's what it means, and I want you to take note of this today. To give thanks in the Greek, it means to actively express gratitude. And so when you read that, give thanks or gave thanks, it simply means to actively express gratitude. And I believe actively expressing gratitude, it's missing in our culture today. And I, listen, this message is for me as much as anyone that's in the room or who may be watching online today, because if you're like me, I'm always looking at what can improve, what, what can be more effective. And I sometimes look at what we don't have instead of looking at what we do have, right? And so it's easy for me to gripe and complain, especially with everything that's going on in America today. It's very easy just to give in and just cash it all in and say, you know what, we're just going to sit around and complain about everything that's happening today. The lack of gratitude in our culture today, I mean, it's very, it's very prevalent. Would you agree with that? I mean, we live in such an entitled society. It's like people today feel they deserve anything and everything. It's like you owe me something. But when you expect or feel you deserve something, are someone it's it are someone it's difficult to be grateful let alone to express that gratitude here's something to think about when something becomes expected it won't be appreciated when something becomes expected it won't be appreciated whether that's your spouse whether that's your kids whether that's your job whatever that is when we expect something we, we expect that it's not appreciated. Expressing gratitude should be more than an action. It should be an attitude that you and I live with every day. 
Well, we should live with this mindset and this attitude that everything that I have, who, wherever I am in life today, I didn't get where I am because of just my ability, but I am who I am and where I am today. I have what I have because of the grace of Jesus Christ. So we should wake up every day and give thanks for all that he has blessed us with. So how often do we take for granted the blessings that God has given us? When's the last time we have given thanks just to have hot water in our home, knowing today that hundreds of thousands and millions of people around the world will not get to enjoy a hot shower as most of you did this morning? How often do we take blessings, just the ability to walk, just the ability to hear? I mean, I'm talking about the everyday blessings that God has given us that we so often take for granted. Well, that's what this whole series is about, is stopping and recognize, yes, there's lots of things that we wish that we could change about ourselves and about our family and our finances and our health, but we've got a lot to be thankful for. And so instead of focusing on who we are not and what we do not have, let's spend a little time focusing on who we are are and who God is in our lives and be grateful and be thankful for all the blessings that he has chosen to give to us. You know, do we spend more time asking God for what we don't have or giving thanks for what we do have? In our prayer time, are we spending more time asking or are we, giving more, are we spending more time giving thanks? Think about that. I think we could, all of us could say there needs to be more balance in our prayer life to, instead of just having this what I call Christmas wish list that we go to Christ and treat him as Santa Claus and Lord, I want, I want, I want, I want, instead of going to him and saying, Lord, today I'm just simply giving thanks for all the blessings that you've given on my life. So we're going to look at a story that I believe will serve as a great example of expressing gratitude. It's found in the book of Luke, chapter 17, and I'm going to do a little bit of reading here. And I'm going to be reading from the message today. It, it, it just breaks it down really good. So beginning in verse 11, it says, It happened that as he, he is referring to Jesus there, he made his way toward Jerusalem. He crossed over the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten men, all lepers, and we're going to talk about that in a moment, they came and met him. They kept their distance, but raised their voices, calling out, Jesus, Master. Now, this catches my attention because often in Scripture, you hear people refer to Jesus as rabbi, which simply means teacher. But in this passage, these ten men addressed him as Master. So when you go back and look in the original language, the Greek language, it means chief or it means commander, the one who has the power to meet needs. You see, they didn't need a teacher in their situation, rather they needed a healer. You see the difference there? They recognized that. Instead of calling him rabbi, they simply referred to him as master. And they said, master, we want you to have mercy on us. Take a good look at them, he said, and go show, taking a good look at them, he said, go show yourselves to the priest. Again, I'm going to unpack more of this in a moment. They went, and while still on their way, they became clean. Notice this was not instantaneous, but as they were on their way, that, that took faith right there. For them to go show themselves to the priest as if they were already healed, but not yet healed. But notice this. It says, one of them. Now, I want you to underline that phrase, circle that, highlight that. One of the ten, when he realized that he was healed, he turned around and he came back shouting his gratitude, glorifying God. He kneeled at Jesus' feet, so grateful. He couldn't thank him enough. And he was a Samaritan. Talk more about that. Jesus said, were not ten healed? Where are the nine? Can none be found to come back and give glory to God except the outsider? Then he said to him, get up on your way. Your faith has healed and saved you. Now, there's a lot of nuggets in here today. I'm only going to get to some of them. But before we dive into this message, I want to highlight a few of observations that, that really, I believe, will help set the context for what we're going to talk about. First of all, all of these men had a common need. 
The Bible says 10 came out to meet. 10 all shouted, Master, have mercy on us. So they all had a need to be healed. <clears throat> all asked for their need to be met. All believed. If they did not all believe, then they would have never left the presence of Jesus to go show themselves to the priest. They obeyed and all were healed. But watch this. Only one of the 10 returned and gave thanks for what he had received from Jesus, the master, that day. So I want to take a closer look at the one and how we can actively express gratitude. So I want, again, when you think about thanks, when you think about giving thanks, what are you doing? You're actively expressing gratitude for what God has done for you in your life. How many of you know that I teach this about communication? It's impossible to communicate too much. How many of you know that it's impossible to, to communicate or express, articulate gratitude in your life? It's just You just cannot do that enough today. Well, I want to give you three ways in which that we can actively express gratitude. So that's the bullseye today, actively express gratitude. So what does that look like? How do I walk that out? How do I live that out today? Number one, I express gratitude with my time. I express gratitude with my time. Now, when, let me just stop and think about, the, I want you to think about this. Whatever's most important to you, you will find time to do. People say all the time, well, I wish I had more time. I, you know, I just, I just don't have the time. We find time to do things that we want to do. And when we really want to spend time with someone, we're going to make time for that. Okay? We don't need more time. We just need better priorities. That's an ouch moment. Okay, let me get back. I express gratitude with my time. Look at verse 15. It says, one of them. I want everybody to say, one of them. One of them, when he realized that he was healed, what did he do? He turned around and he came back. Now, to understand the significance of the man taking the time to come back, you have to understand his situation because he had leprosy. That, that doesn't really mean a lot to you and I today because this is not common, but he had leprosy. It was a highly contagious disease, one that would literally cause the flesh to eat away at itself. Of the 61 defilements of the Jewish law, by the way, leprosy was second only to a dead body, meaning they could not touch a dead body. According to the Jewish law, they, they could not touch a dead body. According to the Jewish, Jewish law, okay, they could not touch anyone with leprosy. So they were required to live like in their own camp. So they would have their own uh, uh, segment, their own neighborhood they had to live in, forbidden to live within the city walls. So think about the isolation of that. So think about pandemic. Think about what that you had to do during the 12 months or 18 months of our shutdown where basically we were all isolated. Well, think about that being forever. Can we just stop and give thanks right now? Come on, somebody. Y'all didn't get that. Okay, I thought that was funny. Not funny. Okay, but they were required to, to live alone. And not only that, they were not allowed to come within six feet of another human being, including their own family. And as a matter of fact, if the wind was blowing on that particular day, they were not allowed to be within 150 feet of anyone. So I want you to think about the isolation of these 10 men being separated from their family, being separated from their friends, not being able to go to job. They couldn't go to work. They couldn't, they couldn't go to family reunion. They couldn't have Thanksgiving meals together with their family. They could not come to church in a worship setting like this and worship as a corporate body, but rather they were isolated and living all by themselves. They were judged to be the living dead and thus had to wear black garments in order to represent death. Now just think about the emotional toll. I'm building. I'm going somewhere with this. And to make sure that everyone knew they were unclean, they had to tear their clothes, cover their upper lip, and if someone got too close, they would have to shout out, unclean. Basically saying, I'm unclean, get away from me. Think about the emotional, just think about what that did to them. Consider for a moment the physical torture, but the mental, emotional stress they experienced because of this disease. I mean, can you imagine not able to watch your children grow up? Never allowed to go to their football games, their band concerts, or their dance recital? Not able to kiss your spouse goodnight? None of that. 
Scripture doesn't reveal how long this man had leprosy, but we do know quickly in one moment everything changed. The moment that they begin to walk away and they believe that Jesus had healed their bodies, then leprosy began to fall off. So you can only imagine the excitement that these men had to be feeling when all of a sudden they lived in this isolation, not able to talk to anybody, not able to hang out with anybody, and now they're on their way back to show themselves to the priest because the priest had to declare them clean before they could reenter society. So you can only imagine the excitement they must have felt. Man, I, I mean, they're probably thinking, what are you going to do first? One mind said, I'm going to Walmart. <laughs> I don't know. One mind said, hey, I'm going to Taco Bell, or I'm going to go to get a Big Mac. And one said, I can't wait to go home and see my kids and see my family. I can't wait to go to Northwest Church and hear Pastor Joe preach in person. I don't know what they were saying, but you can only imagine how excited they must have been once they realized they were clean and healed and ready to re-enter society. Now, Jesus said, when he spoke these words, go show yourselves to the place. There was new hope in this man. The sooner they got to the priest, the sooner he could declare them clean and healed, and the sooner they could go and re-enter society. So the shame, the pain, the guilt, all that would go. But on the way, after realizing he was healed... Listen, I would not have blamed him if he would have just said, thank you, Lord, on my way. I might have done something like that. Thank you, Lord, I'm healed. Thank you, Lord, for saving my life. But I am going to go see Nathan. I, I want to get home to the lion's den. I just want to sit on my couch and hold my remote. Come on, somebody. I mean, you can only imagine the excitement of this guy. But yet he took time to turn around and return to the one who healed him and said, I just want to say Thank you. Isn't that amazing? When you give thanks, it takes time. Whether it's simply bowing your head before your meal and saying, thank you, Lord. or It's going to take time to give thanks. But often we get caught up in the urgent that we forget the important. It is important for us to take time to say thank you. And so many times... The people that are most important to us are the ones that we actively express gratitude the least. Y'all are really shouting me down today. It's good. It means I'm hitting home today. Take time to write a note or to make a phone call. It takes time to do that. Take time to give thanks to God. And get, take time to give thanks to those around you. One man took the time to come back and express his gratitude. In our culture today, be the one who expresses gratitude. Be the one who says, I'm going to take time to say thank you each and every day to give thanks for God, for him blessing you with a great family, food on your table, clothes on your back, running water in your house, an automobile to drive, a home to live in, a great church to attend, and not perfect, but great kids. Come on, somebody. We're just going to give thanks and be the one to actively express gratitude for all that we have in life. Number two, I express gratitude with my words. Look at verse 15. Shouting his gratitude. I love that word, shouting. You know what it means? I looked it up. You know what it means? Shout. That's good. That's profound, isn't it? He raised his voice, glorifying God. Now, we probably could argue that the other nine were grateful for their healing. I mean, who wouldn't be? Who wouldn't be? But only one took the time to express his gratitude through words. You have, you've, I've heard, you've heard the phrase, I said it earlier, that gratitude is an attitude or should be an attitude. I say it's more than an attitude. It's articulating your attitude. It's one, it's one thing to be grateful and thankful for your family and the blessings of God. And I hear especially guys say this. Well, she already knows I love her. My kids already know I love them. Well, when is the last time that you have actively expressed that to them with your words? It's good. It's good stuff, okay? Good preaching, Pastor. 
we're just going to encourage you today. That's really good, okay? Thank you for reminding us of this. Thank you all so much. Patty cake, okay. <clears throat> How often do we verbalize our gratitude? I just want you to let, let, that, sim- let that marinate for How often do we express our gratitude? You say, well, Pastor, that's just not my personality. Well, change it. Learn to express gratitude, okay? Here's a great line. I saw this or heard this. I don't know who to give this credit for, but it's mine now, okay? So here it is. If we see it, let's say it. If we see it, let's say it. I want you to write that down today. If we see it, let's say it. So when I see the goodness, when I see the grace, when I see the favor, the provision, the protection of God, I'm going to say, thank you, Lord. When I see the blessings that God has poured out on my life, I'm going to say, thank you. Come on, when I get in my automobile and I see the, I'm going to say, thank you, Lord. When I walk into my closet and I got clothes to wear today, I'm going to say, thank you, Lord. When I've got a working refrigerator in my house, come on somebody. I'm going to say, thank you, Lord. When I see my kids acting in kindness, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to say, thank you. Psalm 69 and 30 says, let me shout. Come on, raise my voice. Shout God's name with a praising song and let me tell his greatness in a prayer of thanks. Come on, let's let it Let's actively express gratitude. Let's shout. God's not going to get nervous if you raise your voice and say today, God, I just want to shout your praises. And I want to give thanks for who you are. And I want to give thanks for everything that you've done in my life up to this point. When I see a serve team member serving my kids. I'm going to say thank you. When I see somebody serving coffee to me in the lobby, I'm going to say thank you. When someone's greeting at the door, they're operating a camera, I'm going to take time to stop and say thank you for serving. So when you see your spouse doing the dishes, folding the laundry, and getting the kids ready for school so you can sleep in, after you pick yourself up off the floor of shock, Say thank you. Come on. When you see it, say thank you. When you see kindness in your kids, cleaning their room, brushing their teeth, and dating a normal person, say thank you for giving me a little bit of hope. Come on, somebody. So when you see it, say it. When you see a blessing in your life, say thank you. Just give thanks. And live with this attitude of actively expressing gratitude. Because here's what I know. The other nine, I I promise you, those guys were grateful. They just didn't take the time to come back and express that gratitude with their words. But the one, only 10% of the ones who received the same blessing, took the time to return to what? To articulate his gratitude. I can be grateful, but if I don't tell you, how would you know it? I can be grateful for you, but until I tell you, you don't know it. Again, you cannot, you cannot express gratitude enough. You can't say thank you enough. You can't say I love you enough. You can't say I appreciate you enough. You can't say I love you and I'm proud of you. You cannot say those things enough. As I stated earlier, the other nine, they were probably grateful, considering the magnitude of their miracle, but only one returned to verbalize his gratitude. Expressing gratitude must be more than thoughts or intentions. It must be more than thoughts or intentions, because gratitude should never remain silent. Gratitude should never remain silent. Paul writes in Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, he says, let every detail, I want you to listen to the words of this. He says, let every detail in your lives, in your lives, in your lives, words, actions, whatever be done in the name of the master, Jesus, thanking God the Father, check this out every step of the way. So let's, let's look at this. I want you to watch this. This is very important. So in every detail of our lives, In every step of our journey on this earth, let's give thanks to God the Father. In every detail of your lives, every step that you take in this life, let's give 
thanks. So we are to express our gratitude through our time and through our words. And finally, I express gratitude with my actions. We've got to put it into action. Look at verse 16. He kneeled at Jesus' feet, so grateful. And the scripture says he could not thank him enough. So just visualize that with me. He comes running back. And Jesus is like, what does this dude want? I've already healed him, but he comes back. He says, I cannot thank him enough. And then just a little sidebar there, and he was a Samaritan. I'm going to show you that here in a minute. Note, he doesn't cry unclean this time. You see the difference there? He's not standing at a distance calling out unclean as he did before. But he comes close. He kneels at his feet, shouting his gratitude and glorifying God. And no matter how much he worshiped Jesus, it was like, it's not enough. I'm expressing my gratitude. I took time to come back. I, I, I'm articulating my gratitude with my words, but it just, it just, it's not enough. Do you ever feel that way sometimes? It's just like I just don't have, the, I don't have the ability to articulate or communicate how grateful and thankful I am. Well, that's the picture of this one man who came back and fell at Jesus' feet. He said, I just don't have the ability to articulate how I really feel on the inside. But Jesus, I just want you to know that I'm over the top beyond the map, over the cliff. I am super pumped. I am so thankful and grateful for what you've done in my life. Now, you can only imagine how the people standing around him must have thought. I mean, don't you think, you think somebody in the crowd said, that's a little excessive? Oh, sure. Does he really have to be that demonstrative? Does he have to really be that grateful and thankful? But this is the big surprise of the story. The most rejected was the most grateful. The Bible says, and he also was a Samaritan who was an outcast and rejected race in biblical times. Oftentimes, those who have the least are the most grateful. It should be the other way around, but it's not. I'm just going to let that sit. Those who have the least often are the most grateful. The outsider, the Samaritan, the one despised by the Jews. So Jesus was a Jew. Just the mere fact this man's having a conversation with Jesus in public was taboo. It was off limits. He shouldn't have been able to do that. But he went to the Jewish healer and fell on his face before him. The King James Version doesn't, say, doesn't use the word Samaritan. It uses the word foreigner. Again, a reflection referring to he was an outsider. He doesn't belong to us. As to say he's not one of us. Yet he was the only one who expressed his gratitude. And I want you to look at Jesus' response because this is what really got my attention a few years ago. Because I taught this. This started out as a, as a teaching in staff a few years ago. But Jesus said, we're not ten healed. Where are the nine? Can none be found to come back and give glory to God except this outsider? Then he said to him, get up on your way. It's interesting to me that Jesus did not acknowledge the one who returned. He didn't acknowledge the gratitude of the one that had returned. But he asked about the nine who didn't. He doesn't demand we return but recognizes when we don't. It's a good thought. Those nine revealed it's possible to receive God's gift with an ungrateful spirit. Those nine revealed it's possible to receive God's gift with an ungrateful spirit. The story gets better. Jesus said, your faith has healed and what? Saved you. So only the one who expressed his gratitude in time, word, and action, I want to show you this, received more from Christ. You, you got to get this. I'm almost done. So dial back in on me. This is good. All 10 received physical healing, but only one received spiritual healing. The other nine were given a new life on earth. Only one was promised life for eternity. God has already given us so much to be grateful for. He's given us the gift of salvation, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Come on, our job, our family, living in a nation where we can come in and worship freely. But he doesn't want to stop there. God has more to give to us 
will you come back and express more gratitude and experience more grace? So the more grateful I am, the better position that I'm going to be in to receive more from Christ. What do we do with spoiled brats? Eventually, we stop giving to them. And eventually, we say, you're not grateful, so I'm going to take something away. But the more we say thank you and the more we express gratitude, the more we're going to get. Now, that's not our motive for expressing gratitude. But I want all of us this morning, if you would, I want you to stand. And if you're watching online today, I want you to stay with me because this is most important. Our team is coming. They're getting in place. And here's what I want us to do. I'm going to give a salvation call here in a moment. But first of all, I want you to begin to get in the grateful mindset. I want you to begin to get into this, Lord, in what way do I need to actively express gratitude more? Who in my life do I need to actively express gratitude more? Maybe it's him. Maybe it's God the Father. I don't know. But I want you to begin to think about those thoughts. I want you to bow your heads. Again, we want to thank you for joining us here on YouTube. And if you have made a decision to follow Christ today, make sure to leave a comment down below or to let us know at northwestchurch.tv. Well, if God has encouraged and strengthened you through this message, make sure to share this video with your friends and we'll see you next time.